My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Clay America. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. Because my job's not just to entertain you, but dead skating t-shirts. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Last night, last night, last night, the keepers of the Dow Jones Industrial Average made some seemingly baffling moves. Swapping out sell, sell, sell. Pfizer for Amgen. Bye, bye, bye. Axing Raytheon. For a Honeywell. Bye, bye, bye. And ditching Exxon. <laughs> For Salesforce, which we'll be hearing from later tonight after the monster quarter they just reported. Placing the largest oil and gas company with a once obscure software play? Uh, uh, dropping a respected drug company for a decent biotech? Kicking a defense contractor to the curb for an industrial? If it made you scratch your head, you're not alone. These changes had an enormous impact on today's action. You didn't think they would, but they did. Dow ultimately dipping 60 points. Even as the S&P advanced 0.36%, then the NASDAQ gained 0.76%. And in all honesty, I think these moves made a lot of sense. They bring the Dow closer to the reality of the new economy, not the memory of the old economy. Before I delve into each trade, you should know there's a ceremonial aspect to the Dow. It's kind of like the king to the S&P 500's prime minister, simultaneously more prestigious and a lot less important. When I was still a hedge fund manager, I included my fund's performance against both the Dow and the S&P, but only included the Dow because we had some older investors who still regarded it as the most important benchmark. Now that we live in a world of ETFs, the ones that mirror the S&P have trillions of dollars in them, and whenever a new name gets swapped in, there's a gigantic wave, a tidal wave of buying and selling. The Dow, on the other hand, has very little money invested in via ETFs. Still, it's a big deal if you work for one of these anointed companies, because this is a very exclusive club with only 30 members, and you can get dropped if you underperform. Look at what happened to GE. But that's not why Exxon, Pfizer, or Honeywell got the boot. And by the way, I thought that all of these would go down at a particular point because they tend not to go up and stay up. But today happened to be a very special day, particularly for this one. Let's go over these three trades. First, the real shocker here is an oil company coming out and a cloud company coming in. ExxonMobil is not just any oil company. It is a colossus that bestrides the world. Ten years ago, this was the biggest company on Earth. It's shrunk since then. But even four years ago, it was, with, it was the fourth largest. Exxon was always considered the safest, most conservative oil play. But over the last few years, it lost that crown to Chevron which is why Chevron's probably going to be staying in the Dow. In fact, Exxon now makes me a little nervous because it's got an 8.5% dividend, which suggests that a lot of investors believe that dividend will have to be slashed. What a stunning fall from grace for one of the greatest blue chips of all time. In its place, we're getting Kramer Fave, Salesforce. The cloud kingpin that now has a larger market cap than Exxon. Oh, these are two perfect foils. Exxon, which was founded in 1870 when it was the bedrock of Rockefeller's old Standard Oil Company. Salesforce just turned 21. It came public in 2004. And since then, the stock's up uh, 770%, 7,700, 7,700%, 7,700%. Eh, what's that, right? 7,700% from its IPO price. Exxon's arguably the world's leading contributor to global warming. Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, is trying to plant 3 trillion trees to recapture that carbon. Good trade. I think this is a fantastic move. Exxon represents the fuel of the old economy, oil and gas. Salesforce represents the fuel of the new economy, code, cloud, digitization. I know it's a business-to-business operation, but as someone who's run a business, I can tell you that we had a 30% boost not long after Salesforce was installed. We'll flesh this story out further when we talk to Mark Benioff later in the show about his remarkable quarter. But the key here is something I've been saying for a while. Oil and gas is simply not investable for the long term. I'm doubling down on that view. All right, how about swapping out Pfizer for Amgen? Okay, and I'm a little torn here, okay? Uh, sure, maybe Pfizer's too much like fellow travelers Johnson & Johnson and Merck. If that's the case, I'm going to go with a medical instruments play. How about Thermo Fisher? They're, how about Abbott Labs? A big hold of my charitable trust. Monster good. Uh, these are amazing companies, but it seems like they specifically wanted some biotech to highlight the industry's increasing relevance. So fine, let's accept that the Dow needs a biotech. Why well, Amgen, though? This is one of the great growth stocks of our era. It is up 72,000% since its IPO in 1983, but it's no spring chicken. Amgen is more like the face of biotech in 2000 than the face of biotech in 2020. 
I'm sure the Pfizer people are scratching their heads as the growth rates are actually similar. And Pfizer is almost 4% yield. As a portfolio manager, I, I would make this call. But they wanted a biotech, and Amgen is the biggest biotech, although definitely not the best or the most representative. I would go there with some others that I write about all the time. Finally, there's the Raytheon for Honeywell swap. Now, this is a very, very interesting one, and I'm going to tell you why, because this has not anything having to do with Raytheon. You see, um, it's, just, it's so straightforward that it's basically housekeeping. When the old United Technologies split into three companies, they merged their aerospace business with Raytheon, spinning off Otis Elevators. We had them on. Great story. A carrier of the climate equipment control. The old United Technologies was a diversified industrial. The new Raytheon's an aerospace and defense play that's way too similar to another Dow Jones compadre, Boeing. Meanwhile, Honeywell looks a lot like the pre-breakup United Technologies. They got an aerospace division that's roughly 37% of the business. They also got building technologies division, performance materials, safety and productivity solutions. All these are highly engineered. That's the keyword, engineered businesses. Honeywell's revolutionizing all sorts of seemingly banal industries. For example, their Aclar healthcare business is developing a vaccine packaging that's a lot more practical than glass files. They can do billions of them. Their heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems are packed with software. Their warehouse automation division is growing at a 20% clip, 300% increase in orders, and a backlog of 140%. Their battery business is fabulous, too. Oh, and they have the best mass franchise for anyone who's really worried about COVID. Don't take it from me. Listen to what J.P. Morgan Steve Tusa, the best industrial analyst going, told me about the new Honeywell. And I quote, at its heart, Honeywell is an automation controls technology company with a heartbeat of that installed base software. The irons in the fire range from standalone software for commercial buildings and e-commerce to quantum computing, related revenue streams, and businesses being created out of thin air by leveraging an already embedded R&D function. The balance sheet offers the resources to accentuate these initiatives and compound earnings in the age of split-ups. This is a synergistic conglomerate that works, end quote. Steve Tusa. Like Salesforce, it's a very big position my travel trust, and I was hoping it would go lower so we could buy more. Now, that seems less likely. Now, in the end, I don't think these three additions will matter all that much to the actual Dow's direction. If you bought the winners, you might not want to stick around unless you're willing to do the homework and understand what these three companies actually do. This isn't like the S&P where you buy and flip. There's no one to flip to. That said, if we're going to have a prestigious ceremonial index like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we might as well try to make it more modern, more representative of the world today, not the world of yesterday. The oil industry shrinking. The cloud's on fire. Farm is fine. Biotech growing like a weed. And swapping out Raytheon for Honeywell is really just a return to the status quo anti United Technologies breakup. Welcome back, Honeywell. Here's the bottom line. This rebalancing came about because of a need for more technology in this index, given how big the tech sectors come. I think that the job's almost done. Okay, there are some stragglers out there in the index that we like, right? I mean, how about Facebook? How about Amazon? Alphabet? They'd be good additions, although that could take some time, especially since it is the Dow Jones industrial averages that we're talking about. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.